Hey guys, welcome to today's tutorial, The Five Commandments by Thelonious Monk. Steve Lacey made a list of advice given to him by Thelonious Monk. We made a little selection of our favorites. As musicians and students, we can get carried away by theory, notes, or even superficial stuff and lose focus on the more intangible elements in music. These things have more to do with the framework from which you operate, the bigger picture. A genius is the most like himself. All great musicians have this in common. You recognize them after just a few notes. Thelonious Monk urged his musicians to develop a known identity on their instruments and just push the boundaries. Whatever you think can't be done, somebody will come along and do it. And Charlie Parker said kind of the same thing while being interviewed by Paul Desmond. Most likely in another 25, maybe 50 years, some youngster will come along and take the style and really do something with it, you know? Five years before this interview, in a memo to himself, Paul Desmond also wrote on this very same subject. He actually wrote about staying away from the style of Charlie Parker that a lot of the players at that time were copying. He wrote as advice to himself, the minute you defer to someone else's opinion or start playing things you really don't like yourself because you think somebody else will like them, you're hung. Never forget that it's completely impossible to be all things to all people. You end up at best being admired by the wrong people for the wrong reasons and quite possibly being disliked by those with whose tastes you have the most in common. And about half a century later, Alan Holdsworth backed him up by saying If people spend five minutes to figure out who they were instead of 20 years who I am. I was probably in my early 20s when I really started to think about my own image, my own real, like, what do I want to do with this drum set? Not just copying other great players and doing those type of things. Opening yourself up to your own instincts is the best way to discover the best technique for you. Because I can show you my technique, and you might find some inspiration in it, but you're gonna be most comfortable playing your own technique. Just because you're not the drummer doesn't mean you don't have to keep time. This is an important one for all of us non-drummers, especially horn players. They're always dragging, like the oil. It was, you know, it's like, look, this is the beat, play with me. You know, I have the same feeling. It's, uh, I went through a lot of development when I was a kid playing in big bands and the horns are always dragging. It also really helps to think like a drummer, playing it as intense as the drummer plays his kicks on the cymbals. But to just be able to lock into a groove and, and play a couple notes and have rhythmic intention with it, to be able to, you know, to think like a drummer and to be able to go, you know, bop, da, 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 ba, da, da, you know. What's the reason for that dragging problem? Probably because melodic instruments put the main focus on melodic content. It seems that rhythm and keeping time almost become a necessary evil to play that melodic content. Two crude categories of music are pitch and rhythm. So what is rhythm? The word rhythm comes from the Greek word rhythmos, derived from rein, which means to flow. Very basic, rhythm is music's pattern in time. And what is time? Well, that can be quite a big philosophical question, so let's not go down that road. Basically, in music, it's a consistent, measurable baseline to refer the rhythm to. And many great players recognize the importance of keeping time. For me, I think the most important thing is, is time. So they do that boring, old-fashioned thing, practicing with a metronome. I have at times used a metronome on two and four. I get depressed when I do it because I rush, you know. Um, <laughs> It does help. Some took it further and are quite good drummers themselves.
Those who actually have a duo recording with Chikoria on drums and Michael Brecker on tenor, where they play Confirmation, which is part of some bonus tracks on the album Three Quartets. Always leave them wanting more. Dave Brubeck told the story of when Paul Desmond played his very last concert because he was terminally ill uh, due to lung cancer. The uh, audience asked for an encore and Paul Desmond smiled at Dave Brubeck and said, leave them always wanting more. This is a quite clear statement by itself. Why would you leave your audience wanting more? The solution may be found within psychology. The Zygarnik effect. Our minds quickly forget finished tasks. However, they are programmed to continually interrupt us with reminders of unfinished tasks. We are in a higher alerted state when we experience unfinished things. Just like we keep thinking about that series season finale, that cliffhanger, it's just because we didn't find closure. It's about not throwing everything out in every solo, just keep something as a reserve. What you don't play can be more important than what you do. One day we attended a masterclass by Eric Mariental and there he shared a story about having trouble with some Chikoria tune with very hard changes and he asked Chikoria about what to play over them on which Chick answered instead of thinking what to play think about where to leave space. When improvising it's very natural to anticipate what to play next but we very seldom think about the opposite where to leave space. Check Michael Brecker's comment on the iconic recording he did for Klaus Augerman's orchestra, Cityscape. What I tried to do also, you know, is leave some space. We also get the same advice from the classical world. And if you don't know the next note you're playing, then don't play a note. Discrimination is important. It's almost but not quite the same as the previous commandment. To get a certain line in your playing, it's important to know which notes you will be playing, but also very important which notes to leave out, like discriminating certain notes. Operating in a certain set of rules can create a playground to be stylistically clear. There are certain times and, and situations and, and musical places that, that rules are, are necessary. I mean, you can't go into a pop gig and play like a jazz drummer. It's not going to work, vice versa. The qualities in music, which I consider most important and still do, were beauty, simplicity, originality, discrimination and sincerity. Bonus! What should we wear tonight? Sharp 11 as possible. What you probably don't know is that Thelonious Monk was an early admirer of our channel, as he was the first subscriber of Van La Lettre. So you might as well join him and subscribe to our channel. Or if you like this video, please consider subscribing to our Patreon page, so we can keep delivering these tutorials for you guys. <laughs>